Time to call poison control? Well, maybe it's not poison, but how do we deal with toxic family members? Toxic. That brings to mind poisonous, right? I went on the internet and did a little search for how to deal with poison, toxin. As we talk about toxic family members, I think that there's some overlap here that might be helpful. Three different strategies or approaches. So let's just say that you've been exposed to something toxic. Sometimes when we're out hiking or something, we might brush up against some stinging nettle or some poison ivy. Those are toxic plants and they cause a sting. So at this first level of intervention, let's talk about how to rinse, cleanse, dilute, or diffuse. This is what you would want to do if you run across some stinging nettle, for example. You want to rinse it off or somehow cleanse that. Minimize the initial effects of the toxic exposure. So in a relationship setting, the initial sting can sometimes be diffused or diluted a little bit through self-care. Taking care of yourself in a way that fortifies you against these brushes. You'll find that you're much more resilient, for example, when you're getting enough sleep when you've fed yourself well, you've got proper nutrition, if you're, if you're getting regular exercise, all of these elements of self-care help to dilute the initial effect of having a toxic interaction with someone. Another thing that's been shown through the research and the literature is debriefing. We use this primarily to address traumatic incidents, but it's also true in a toxic interaction with a family member, a coworker, someone in your world that has that sting. Being able to debrief that with someone, just talk it through, tell them what happened, chat with someone about it. That helps to dilute the sting a little bit initially and some of the long-term effects of that toxic interaction. And then finally, on this first level of intervention, I would say perspective is important. Keep it in perspective. How big of a deal is it really? Now I know in the moment it feels huge, but backing up from it, taking a higher perspective, a higher altitude view of it, it starts to shrink down. I had an experience where I got to visit the Arctic Circle in Rovaniemi, Finland. When I was visiting, I saw this sign You've seen signs before that are, you are here kind of signs. Well, this sign had a picture of the world, you know, the entire globe. And there was a little dotted line around the top of it with an arrow pointing to it. And in Finnish, it said, you are here. And the perspective just almost blew my mind because I was having some personal stress in my life, like we always do at different phases of our life. And seeing that arrow pointing to the top of the world, I realized, wow, most of the problems and the challenges that are going on in the world are down below me somewhere because I'm up here on top of the world, literally. And it caused everything to shrink into a perspective that said, you know what? It's important to me, but in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not that big of a deal. Keeping that kind of a perspective helps to alleviate some of that initial sting as well. Now let's move to the second level of dealing with that toxic or poisonous interaction. This is where it's already been ingested. Maybe it's starting to have some effect. Maybe it's more of a longer term thing that you're dealing with. We want to purge, antidote, counteract, or remove, if possible, the poison, the toxin from our system. So as that relates to relationships, we're now getting into what we're trying to do here on this channel through positivity training, conditioning our mind to see things differently or to take something that's already happened way back in the past sometime and rework that in our present thinking to the point where it's not having the same toxic effect. 
therapy, counseling, coaching. These are all examples of what we can do to deal with that toxic relationship that's already taken hold, that tends to be more long-term. And I would add to this, building up and enhancing and enriching positive relationships. Think of it as an antidote for some of the toxic ones. You'll notice that who you hang out with matters. In fact, I've heard it so many times in the professional speaking industry that you become the average of the five people you hang out with the most. We want to create positive, inspiring, uplifting, affirming relationships in our life, which will help us to counteract or provide an antidote for some of the toxic ones that have shown up in the past. As I was perusing through the poison control website and looking at some of the resources there, it became obvious that a big part of their focus is this third level of how we deal with toxins or poisons. And that has to do with prevention, protection, avoidance of future or further contact with that toxic element. Let's apply that to the relationships. What can we do to provide some level of protection or precaution that will protect us in the future from experiencing that toxicity? I think one of the important things we can do is to set appropriate boundaries and limits. Nobody else is going to do this for you. So it's important that you identify what's okay, what's not okay. What will I allow? What will I not allow? What positions am I willing to put myself in versus what positions am I not going to get into? You get to set these limits. Setting them appropriately and assertively is a great way to protect yourself from future toxic exposure. In doing this, we get to use assertive communication. Assertive and aggressive are not the same thing. I've worked with so many clients who feel a little resistance to the assertiveness training that I do because they're afraid it might come across as being mean. No, don't be mean, be very kind. You are a kind, loving, generous, benevolent person. Show up that way and use assertive communication that sends a very clear message to those around you about the boundaries we already talked about. Now a final thought on the protection end of things. It's okay to opt out when it makes sense, when it's appropriate. It's okay for you to opt out of an event, an interaction, a conversation. If it's not going well for you, if it is in fact toxic, this is a way that you can protect yourself against those effects. So it's okay, for example, to say, you know what? This conversation is not serving me well right now and then opt out. If you're on the phone, you can actually hang up. You got a little button for that. Hmm. I wonder if we could use that as part of our protection plan. Yeah, of course you could. Now, I'm not saying that you should avoid all people. Not at all. In fact, we want to, to go back to what we already talked about in building and enriching and enhancing those relationships that are healthy and affirming and positive. We wanna do that all day long. It is okay for you to opt out of some of the things that would draw you into that toxic exposure. I think we can learn a lot from poison control and maybe that will improve our relationships as well. I guess the same principles apply whether we're dealing with poison or toxic interactions. I hope you found this helpful comment down below. Let's have a conversation about what we're learning. <laughs>